Welcome, 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 friends. OG Murphe here with you. We're getting ready to play some D&D tonight. This is the first group of guys I ever played uh, a real game of D&D with that lasted longer than a month or two. We have been running this campaign for over a year now, off and on, rotating between DMs. I am one. Uh, Anthony, who plays Simone, is the other DM. We play a homebrew version based on Pathfinder 1E, but we have adopted enough 5E mechanics on top of it that, you know, it's a homebrew system and 5E homebrew, Pathfinder homebrew, what's the difference at this point? Um, kind of disclosures here, this is not a, like, built for stream game. We I, I, These guys are nice enough to let me stream. I enjoy sharing this with the world, but uh, these guys are just kind of playing their own D&D game, so no offense is intended and hopefully none is taken. So let's get to it, do some recap, uh, introduce some characters, and start playing some D&D. All right, guys. Go I'm, check it. I'm live. Who's uh, who's uh, who's doing recap? Reed's doing recap. Are we doing Reed? Reed let's let's recap. hear that Reed cap then. There you oh go. Oh my god, I changed my mind. Okay. Uh, <laughs> We mostly fought last time. Uh, we killed Mr. Big Bad Man here. We killed these folks and took control of the cannon. Monzo, I believe, pummeled all of these guys. I don't remember how he died. I think he ended up coming up to us here. Um, and we pummeled him as well. Uh, Professor Struva manned this cannon really well. And basically disintegrated one dude down there. So that was really interesting. Uh, we let Mr. Tumnus out, which is how we knew that the big baddies uh, down here were here. And now he ran off to go find the Int. I have his name somewhere. Elm. Um, oh, Elm. No. Elm. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Professor Struva also stuffed the cannon in some hay bales with an explosive around here somewhere which will go off uh what did he say if the bales are moved shit he booby trapped it yeah correct uh and then we looted the orcs and some people got some really cool stuff i don't know what they <laughs> got because i rolled a two so i got like pocket lint um so there's recap did I miss anything, anybody? Pocket lint? <laughs> yeah, it was really bad. I, I have a low... I think I have a negative to the charisma. Well, yeah, I got uh, a uh, Who's doing the stream? Because I'm not seeing anything. Uh, it is me, but it's via it's via Twitch. So uh, it's not on Discord because my PC can't handle doing both. Uh, but... You'll put a link. I think uh, one person got a key or there's something. There's a little linky-poo. Does anybody want to speak up on what they got? Um, yeah. Let's see, I got a crude map um, with on the corner. It has a little signature that I can't read. I don't think I can um, read the language. I got mm -hmm. a giant eagle's talon with notches. All right. Um, and I got some bone dice and a pair of gloves that I need to spend some time with and 11 gold. And that's that's what I got. Oh, and I took a bag of mystery mushrooms from, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's what I got. Anybody else got anything cool? Just so that we're all aware of what we got. If you got shit like Joe, then you, you don't have to speak up. But if you got something cool. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. I got a plus one mithril armor. Oh, hey -oh. That's pretty cool. That was a good one. Pretty good. Anyone else? I got a book I got... in Orcish called Spiders and Friends. Yes, you did. It's in very bad condition. It's very, very bad condition. Yeah. And some gold. I got a small leather-bound journal saying it's Tahaka's journal, a dirty, incomplete deck of playing cards, and then of course I found the main chest in the in the big orc building. 
And so, then um, I got eleven gold, three tusks, and yeah, a and three tobacco. Yeah, I got three tusks as well. <clears throat> Let me know when we have uh, like our in game now. If we have started, uh, you guys haven't done your character intros, so we're not even close to to actually getting going yet. Uh, Tess, start us off. Tyler, tell us about you. Who's the Tess? Tess, he uh, comes from the College of Arcane Arts. He uh, he's trying to learn some new shit. He likes magic, missile, and fireball. He's a sorcerer. He's an elf. He is a twig. He is a glass cannon. A twig and a glass cannon. That's a task. Uh, Aaron, tell us about Monzo. <clears throat> uh, Monzo is a level six monk. Uh, big dude. Uh, not not middle age, but maybe mid thirties. Uh, pretty lightness complexion, round face. Uh, pretty big dude. Um, looks like he could be a power lifter. Uh, he wears a kimono with leather underneath and he has a a uh, belt with all kinds of knickknacks that he carries with him as he's uh, found around uh, the world. Love it. Uh, Anthony, let's hear about Simone and Wilb. Uh, Simone is a basically a cholo, cholo elf who originally was like a merchant with his parents, but after they passed away, he's been kind of searching for meaning uh, when he decided to take upon a quest to go to Irrigan and help with uh, a tribe of... Uh, uh, you know, lizard people. And uh, now he is in uh, the middle of the mountains and there's potentially a dragon flying around them and we just burnt down a whole orc uh, camp. Uh, and uh, and it's weird how our journeys take us places. Uh, next, it, uh, he has also, he says he's a summoner. He has his idol on Wilb, who is a four-legged uh, tiger creature, but also has two heads. One of them being the tiger head, the second head being a snake's head. And uh, he is a sassy cat, but also kind of a boring snake, you know, uh, no thrills, very uh, bare bones, kind of uh, two personality. And uh, that's Will and Simone. I fucking love it. Uh, next up is Joe with Reed. Reed is a young supple meat sack stuffed into oh. into chainmail oh. <laughs> into chainmail armor. Um, he wields a pretty badass shield as well. the uh, The brains of the operation is not what you would use to describe him. Um, <laughs> and he likes to hit things, and he likes to hit them hard. That's Reed. Love it, uh, Chris. Let's hear about Sigbert. Uh, I'm Sigbert. I'm a middle-aged fighter, uh, former soldier, turned uh, mercenary, turned uh, stuck with these guys. Um, Pop, I got stuck, two huh? swords, stuck. <laughs> uh, two swords, and uh, yeah, I'm Sigbert. Uh, all right, then that brings us to. Last but certainly not least, Soto playing Kaithar. Uh, so yeah, I'm playing Kaithar. He's a uh, kind of middle-aged uh, barbarian uh, who is hell bent on killing every orc he sees due to uh, their race destroying the village. So he's been uh, on a on a journey for sure, to say the least. Um, he's a uh, recovering alcoholic, uh, only recovering because there's no alcohol to drink. Um, <laughs> other. <laughs> Other than that, uh, he's looking to fuck people up and have a good time and chew gum. Uh, he's it. all about gum. And for just the next few minutes, I will be playing uh, Arthur, who Professor Arthur Struva, who is uh, a graduate of the University of New Birmingham, a veteran of the King's Navy, and a uh, retired artillery man and firearm enthusiast. Uh, and that <laughs> is Professor Arthur Struva. Uh, so <clears throat> that brings us to very finally, thank you all for your patience, our game. You folks have been, your characters have been going nonstop for over 24 hours at this point. 
because of tr trying to travel, trying to rest, having an invisible person interrupt that rest, finding this gatehouse, sieging this gatehouse. Um, so the very early glow of the morning dawn is beginning to break. Uh, as you guys have spent some time booby trapping this cannon and making it otherwise inoperable, uh, at courtesy of Arthur, while Simone and Will were rummaging through the large tent, which was obviously uh, some kind of headquarters uh, or central location where he found this journal and a locked chest. Um, and all of this after the dramatic battle <clears throat> where the leader, whose name is Tahaka, uh, has, is now, has now been slain. And I will remind you guys that I rattled off the loot for Tahaka, but you guys did not split it up. You guys have collected it as a party, but uh, but nobody has, it like hasn't been assigned to anybody. I don't know who's carrying it. Um, and that was a Cloak of Resistance plus two, a, a war horn, uh, a folded dirty letter, uh, a glowing war hammer, and a ornate belt that looks much like those which Reed and Kythar wear. And you guys have yet to determine what you're going to do with all of that stuff. Uh, you have let the fawn loose, uh, affectionately referred to mm -hmm. as Mr. Tumnus. And he, like, bolted, but he bolted the wrong way because the gatehouse was on fire. Uh, and he's, like, out of here for now. And he has not shown back up uh, in the hour or so that you guys have been digging through this camp, looting through stuff, sabotaging this cannon. So it's early morning. Uh, the gatehouse at this point is completely ablaze. Just a huge... A bonfire doesn't even really do it justice. It looks more like a small forest fire. Um, and dark black smoke rises into the sky, now visible in the low early morning light. What would you guys like to do? Hey, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty, pretty tired. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tusks. I have three of them, from my understanding, since... Are, are, are we all agreeing? Are we all... Hey, fools, are we all agreeing to split up, like, the tusk and shit? To where we all get, like, three? I think that's... I think that's, like, fair, right? Plenty fair. Yeah. All that's right, so fine, but I want to talk about that axe. I'm going to take... I'm going to take my tusk, the three that I have. I'm going to go over to uh, uh, Monzo... And I'm going to put it, I'm going to give him one of mine. And I'm going to be like, thanks for protecting me, fool. I'm going to go to Kythar. I'm going to say, thank you for protecting me, fool. And then I'm going to look at Reed. And I'm going to look at uh, uh, Sigbert. And I'm going to see that Sigbert has, he's holding plus one mithril armor. He's holding like valuable armor, it looks like, right? And I'm going to be like, sorry, Sigbert, looks like you already won out. And I'm going to give Reed my tusk. And uh, I'm going to be like, uh, hey, fool, if you guys keep frontlining for me, I'm going to keep giving you guys shit like this. So just make sure I'm protected, fool. Fools. Uh, gladly. <laughs> Thank you. Mine stinks and it's going to be all dripping. <laughs> 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 hey, but the gold you get won't, fool. All right. So I see like there's like, what, hella martial weapons here and shit. I don't need this. But you put those dudes, so what are we doing with this? Um, well, I think Kythar wants the, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I think Kythar wants the, that hammer. Fool, Kythar said he wants to get hammered, right? Oh, I'm, I'm so okay. <laughs> yeah, I said you want to get hammered, fool. No, I <laughs> want that hammer. Uh... Okay, does anybody object to this fool taking that fucking hammer? Is it a two-handed weapon? It is. I don't care. Um, well, can I, can I, can I see it for a second? I hand it to him. Aren't you, aren't you all fists? You can see it for a second if you want. <laughs> I, I handed it to him. David, is, is there like a, a barrel around me or something? Is there a barrel around? No, no, you're, you're, you're fine. You pick it up. It feels warm in your hand. Uh, it feels lighter than it should be for a hammer this size. I think he's asking you if there's something. Yeah, is it like a box or him. something? Yeah. 
Is it a box? No, is there a box? Like around him, something he I can smash. Yeah. Oh, I'm, oh, oh I'm thinking like yeah. around Monzo, like a box big enough to contain Monzo. And I'm like, no, he's standing outside regularly. Uh, is there yeah, a there's, coffin? There's a Monzo-sized coffin. There's a there's a table like like ten feet away. Smash away. Okay, I'd like to take an attack on the table. Uh, it's a table. You're gonna hit. Just roll damage. Uh, which what I guess you don't know what this is. Uh, so it's a great, it's a plus one speed warhammer. Yeah, that's what it is. One D eight. Uh, no, I think it's a D eight plus one automatically without your strength bonus, right? It's got to right? be at least a D ten for a warhammer. Uh, a, yeah, a warhammers warhammer. might be different. Yeah. No, I guess it is only a D eight. Um, no, it's it's not a. Wow, I guess it is only a D eight. I thought the the plus one just adds to your yeah, it modifier adds to hit and adds to um, to damage as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, think uh, I rolled a, th- a three out of eight. A three out of eight. Uh, if you like, you can roll the second time because the speed element on this warhammer allows you to take an extra attack with a full round action, so you can roll damage again if you want because that hammer swing only takes half the time you think it should. Am I, I'm not attuned to it yet, am I? You're not, but you don't, uh, being attuned to it is knowing what it does right away. You can pick up a magic item and say, fuck it, I'm going to start using this and see what happens at any point. I think, I think just for role play, I don't think Monzo would know that. I think he'd use the hammer, hit the, hit the table, not break it, and then say, Ugh, yeah, we, we, no use for this. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'll hand it to Kaithar. And then um, <clears throat> I pull out uh, these these odd-looking gloves that I've never seen anything like them before. This this is what I found, uh, and this map that we can take a look at. Um, I'm going to. So I'm, okay, so uh, I'm, I'm. Can I can I assume that we're in like the main tent? Like, you know, the main general's tent or whatever, all kind of convening right now around this chest guys, that we're around. You guys can be wherever you want to be. I, I have okay. to go to the cannon, but you guys can be in, in the general's Okay. Tent. Uh, and say, like, hey, before we do anything else, we also got this. I'm going to point out a locked chest. I'm all okay. Yeah, nobody found a key, right? Did someone find a key? Did no one find a key? A key, a key. No, I I found this. Maybe, maybe this is a key. And I'll hold it up and it's a tusk with like knocks in it, notches in it. <laughs> All right, fool. Well, can anyone get this open? Why don't you try uh, that Warhammer? Hey, we're trying to get it open, not fucking destroy it, fool. Well, wait now. He has a point. Well, hold on, uh, and I'm going to point at the professor. But, professor, can't you, like, get this shit open with your, like, put the firearms and shit? While you're talking, Arthur's already walking over, like, okay. He t- takes his pistol and cocks back the hammer. All right, everyone clear? Don't want you guys getting hit with a ricochet or something. Um, Stand back. Okay. I'll put my shield in front of me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Arthur gets himself in position, kneels down, and takes a shot at the lock. Uh, sounds great. Roll me a, a regular attack roll as if you were within 30 feet. Um, well, hold on. Gunslingers have, unless I'm metagaming here, and you can let me know. Gunslingers have an ability to destroy locks Stover's not without having to it super carefully. And you guys, as long as he has, oh, as long shit. as he has at least one, uh, you guys are pretty obviously right around the corner from a long rest. So I'm not super worried about tracking all the nuts and bolts of that mechanic. But yeah, Stover, I'm, okay. I'm asking Stover for an attack check for the blast lock utility shot ability. Hey, hey, hey Dave. Okay, that, just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Hey, hey, Dave. Nat 20. I saw that that was a nat 20. Uh, Yeah, bud, so you're going to blow that lock just clean 
off that chest, and it's going to just crack open and, you know, open just a half inch uh, in the wake of your firearm blast. And the ricochet didn't even hit anybody. <laughs> just see Arthur, you know, fling his pistol around and holster it. <laughs> right. And then I imagine it's like a 90 shot of like the camera inside the thing while we all kind of peek into it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> There's just light coming out. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Dave, real quick. Uh, what type of axe was that again? Uh, it was a war. It was a war hammer, a two handed war hammer. Plus one. Plus one. And it's quick. Uh, so you get an extra. If you take a full attack action, you get an extra attack. It's huge. Huge. Uh, huge. You said you said great warhammer. I only have warhammer. I don't have great. It's a, it's a, yeah, I mean, yeah, same difference. A great warhammer, and then you enchant it yourself in your inventory, in the program. I think add custom, the champ. There you go. One, you yeah, plus one, yeah, all that stuff. <clears throat> uh, so do we need to roll a, a, a loot for uh, this? No, this, is, or, this, is a, we... this is a predetermined chest, okay. uh, regardless. Yeah. So you guys so find... That... You guys find actually, you know what? Uh, I need the person opening the chest to roll me a D one hundred just for flavor, more for more than anything else. So Arthur, go ahead and roll me yep. a D your percentile dice and a D ten. Okay, so five uh, D twenties and then a ten. No, no, no. Uh, you have a you have a dice on your thing that says. Oh, I guess you don't on these strips, do you? The ten, twenty, thirty. So just roll me a uh, roll me a two d tens, but do them separately. Roll me one d ten, and then roll me another d ten. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Cool. First digit eight. Hey, eighty-five. Eighty-five. Uh, on an eighty-five, you find a bronze uh, war horn, much like the one on the the leader. Uh, only this one has different warrior characters etched into it as well. Uh, you also find a uh, like a, a set of, of climbing rigs, um, which uh, is obviously is obviously magical uh, in nature with the the way that it uh, like shimmers unnaturally in the light. Uh, and then you also find a like piece of uh, uh, like a piece of lace in there, uh, and uh, and a lantern, a hooded lantern, as well. I'm gonna look in and be all, well, this looks fucking anticlimactic, fool. I thought there'd be like. A bag of gold or, like, a big-ass weapon or something. Fucking puto climbing shit. I'm going to, like, push through. Because <laughs> <laughs> it is obviously no use to Simone, so he's just like, ah. <laughs> is that a new set of black diamond? <laughs> all right, so th- I guess this is all out on the table now, right? Uh-huh. Um... Hey Dave, sorry, I was just a little slow. You said it's just plus one, nothing else I can add. Plus for one and, and quick, I think, is the name of the ability oh, gotcha. that you add to it as well. How it's it's climbing gear? How many sets? It's one. It's one climbing rig set, and and you guys are looking at it, and it's <clears throat> obvious that a it has a magical aura coming off of it, and b the way that you use this is tied to that magical aura, like it doesn't. It doesn't have as many like pintons as you would normally need for a climbing set. It's got this like almost like ninja star looking pinton, which the rope is tied to. And then there's like knots on the rope, like, you know, for climbing and stuff. But it's a, uh, it's like a weird, it, it does not, it's a weird setup, I hmm. guess. I'm not, I'm no climber fool. That's what I got this puto for. And I'm going to point at Will, Will. Well, if anybody else is a climber, I guess you take it, right? Monzo? Yeah, I mean, um, I'd love to figure out how it works. It's a little small for me. I, I usually run XXL, and this looks 
you know, <laughs> medium or large. So I, I need to use it for a while to, to see how it works. And uh, I, I have these, and I put my um, my gloves on the table. Like I'll, I'll trade, I'll trade what out. Are, I'll, what do they? What do they look like? What do the gloves look like? That is a great question. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> they are. Thank you. Thank you for the question. <laughs> <laughs> They are a pair of gloves unlike anything I have ever seen before. <laughs> so you got some like Michael Jackson gloves or something? Like are they, like rhinestone on them? Or what? <laughs> um, uh, you guys got to give me some. I got like a, I got so much bullshit on this loot page. It's crazy. You're uh, fine. You're fine. You're fine. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Uh, while he's looking... Uh, I'm going to, uh, kind of go for the cloak Okay. and, uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to move it over towards a task. Well, I got okay, cloak. a pretty uh, cool cloak now. Don't you think? Yeah. But does that cloak, uh, actually protect you fool? No, but when I flip it, <laughs> you check it out What do we flip see? It between the <laughs> raggedy side and the uh, like clean the clean like, nobleman's fancy side yeah exactly yeah Mom was blown away i know you've been you've been uh, uh you've had a fancy cloak this whole time fool you look like you've been walking through the fucking you know all the way through the swamp i thought this is just like wear and tear and shit oh well it's 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 fancy see i just keep flipping it back and forth what are you hiding from us fool are you I some nobleman? This, I got this was the thing that we got from the, well, we? You know. Wait, so just so I understand, it's it's perfectly clean on one side, like nothing's on it. Yeah, it's and it like looks a different. nobleman's it's like cloak. A, it's, it's a whole like, different cloak. It's a completely different cloak on the other side. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh, also, Aaron, Monzo's gloves are white. Uh, and they they have sapphires slotted in the knuckles, uh, but it's missing two on the right side. Like the Infinity Gauntlet, but made out of leather. <laughs> uh, but made out of uh, like a white cloth. Uh, they're they're more like band gloves with sapphires in, inlaid on them. Well, now you know. There you go. I'm gonna yeah, I'm band gonna put... gloves. <laughs> can I uh, can I slide the gloves on and just see how they feel? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You slide the gloves on, and they don't. Uh, let me see here. You, as a magic user, slide the gloves on and feel your magical repertoire expand from beneath you. It's like a, uh, it's like taking a breath hunched over compared to standing up straight and taking a breath. Like you can, you feel. Uh, like you have a wider range of, of abilities than you did before, but you can't quite put your finger on what it is that you know, but you know that you have access to more magic with these. It's like when Harry Potter first holds onto his wand. <laughs> yeah, a little bit like that, yeah. And so everyone kind of sees that, and I'm just like, oh, fuck. Does it glow too when he puts it on? Yeah, each each of the sapphires very very lightly like, and and you can like feel some. There's nothing audible, but Simone feels like a like a humming, like a like coming from his hands. I'm gonna be like, well, these are yours, Monzo, but fuck, there's something going on with these fool, and I'm gonna. No, I, don't, uh, I don't. I don't want them. They didn't match your eyes anyway. You're in there. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, fool. Well, then, uh, you know, we need to split this shit up, right? But also, we can turn our shit into uh, uh, what's his name? That puto wizard. Have to go back a few months. Hey, that no, yeah. <laughs> gotta go back to a few months for that. Note. Yeah. Uh. So. Um. In that case, uh, so let's let's try to get through this, because uh, we got some reading to do and uh, some walking. And uh, I don't know about you fools, but I don't plan on resting here. But uh, 
we should get to somewhere where we can. Yeah. So first, Emma, who wants the who wants the cloak? <clears throat> oh, you know what? I'm sorry, guys. There are two more items that were in that chest that I forgot about. Uh, there was a very nice vintage bottle of wine, and a magical pan flute, as well. Does uh, Kaithar immediately go for the wine? He starts shaking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say no. That that's a good vintage. We should we should open that on a special occasion. I don't know. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, fair enough. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll keep control for now. I but. have aura of courage. Can I like <laughs> lay my hand on him and be like, you, you can get through this? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I feel I feel a burst of energy. Like <laughs> I can do it. I'm not gonna drink. I'm no, still gonna pat him on the back. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> But he's still side-eyed in that fucking wine, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ooh, it's uh, a rosé. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a little sweet. <laughs> it's a steel. It's a steel barrel. Uh... <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so I'm gonna be like, all right, fool. Well, like since this puto and I'm gonna point my thumb towards a test. Gonna be like, this puto doesn't want it. I feel like we got to make our uh, our frontline people uh, more frontline-y, right? And uh, Ky- does Kaithar have a cloak right now? No. Or, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, oh, man. Hmm. I don't know that it would be much use on me. Yeah, I think I'm... Sigbert's wearing a cloak. A Tesk is wearing a cloak. And I don't know, I know if anybody I else don't have one. I would say I'd be like, let's give it to Kaithar because when he gets mad, he's a lot easier to hit, or at least that's what it seems like. That's a good idea. Unless anybody's got a better idea, fool. Plus, it's starting to get bright, and I know how hard it is to sleep when it's daytime. What's a cloak? Good with that. Uh, I think it's cloak of resistance plus two. That's what it is. Fucking a. Uh, which does not add to your AC, it adds uh, to your saving throws. Which okay. is better when he's in rage. Right. Yeah. Uh, what was left on the table, David? Uh, let me see here. So you guys got the cloak, you guys got the gloves. Um, we had a belt. Uh, there was a belt. Yeah. Yeah. Earlier. Mm-hmm. Giant spell. They don't stack. They, they don't stack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at that point, it's just a fashion statement. But this one looks fancier than yours. Uh, if nobody cares, I might swap out my belt with that one. That's fine. Good. It's a plus um, three. Remind me, what is it? It's a plus three to what? Strength? Strength. Holy shit, I'm already at, I'm already at 21 strength with a base mod of five. Um, you're setting your old belt down on the table? Yeah. I'm going to pick it up and hand it to um, Sigbert and say, maybe you could use this. I don't know. It's a little worn. And it's in, like it's like extra small. So <laughs> It's a giant spell plus three, David? Plus three. Correct. Oh, shit. Okay. And then what? Uh, and then Sigbert, you're getting handed a giant spell plus two. Okay, I'm going to take the belt and I'm going to hold up the mithril armor and ask if anybody wants it. I'm all, I think the person who needs oh, it is shit. currently holding it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I'll just shrug. <clears throat> I'm all, try it on, fool. It looks like it's your size. I'm going to, I'm going to put it on. Like, I'm going to slowly slide it on. And it fits like a glove. I'm going to start Damn. modeling. Damn. Look at you. Hella That's shiny true. and shit. Bow. Do a spin. Do a spin. Dan, you know how many maidens are going to be all over your crotch? (laughs) (laughs) She says, no, tell me. (laughs) Um. And so what I think there's one more weapon um, on there the table. is the and the you're setting your old belt down the climbing the thing that there's I was going to There's the climbing thing out of the chest. There's the I'm gonna letter pick it up that was and on hand his it body to, um, Sigbert and say maybe you could use this. I don't know. 
David, looking at it the pre drawn boring. map, is it's it like, helpful like or is small. it just like so. here's the latrine it's kind of it's, thing? It's completely like you don't even know if it's of this area. You don't even know if and an adult what, drew this map. Uh, and then Sigbert it is like in giant belt plus two. Hey, David, in, the belt, in the, uh, the in PC armor. gen, there's only a um, plus you're two. You're setting plus your old belt down on the table. Yeah. I'm gonna pick it up and hand it to um, Sigbert and save it. There we go. Hold on, guys. I was I was trying to make a clip and then I got double audio in my ears at once. So I'm clear now. I'm solid. We're good. Okay. Um, uh, Joe asked. Joe? The uh, in PC gen, there's only a giant or belt of giant strength. Plus two, plus four, or plus six. Plus two, plus four, or plus six? That's then correct. It, then it must be a plus four. Okay. Holy shit. Thank you. What you could also do is... Oh, wait. Maybe not. I, I tried adding custom. Like... No, well, I was going to say, uh, you can do, like, temporary bonuses. Um, but I'm not seeing, like, ah. a plus one to strength. Keep it oh, easy. Oh. Keep it easy. Yep. Whatever the item is there for, that's what the item will be. Uh, okay, so I'm sorry. Uh, let me get back to my loot page. Find his name. It was under session planning. Camp orc boss. There we go. Uh, cloak resistance. The horn uh, with the with the figures carved in it. Uh, there's the the letter. You already have his journal. Uh, you guys have the warhammer. The belt handled. There was a, the lantern which was in the chest. Uh, which upon closer inspection, anybody who bothers to pick it up will notice that it has uh, it has like constellations uh, carved on the side of it. Uh, and that is the rest of the stuff. I'm gonna pick up that. I'm gonna pick up that lantern. I'm gonna go to um, Arthur, and I'm gonna be like, "Do you like this? Do you like this lantern?" Arthur's gonna inspect the engravings and go, "Yes." I'll be like, "A George fool, if you can make uh, maybe uh, may it hope you uh, may it hope it light our way through this." Uh, you know, ruins we have to go to. Remember, fool, this is just a pit stop on the way there. You're telling me. And then, is it made of, like, Dave, is this, like, a kerosene lantern or something? Or uh, it... I can tell you exactly what it is. It is... E-R-N is the name of the lantern. Uh, it is a black lamp uh, with a wooden frame wrapped in a cover made from white linen uh, on which are drawn numerous uh, constellations. Is it? Uh, is there a note on it that says, may it light your way? Uh, is it, may it? May it be a light to you in dark places when all the lights go out? <laughs> Uh, but it is. But in your hand, it has the distinctive, uh, the distinctive magical flow that uh, that magic items do. Okay, and is it? I guess the real question is: Do I have to like put some kind of kindling in it? Do I got to put some kind of oil in it? Yeah, it's like a it's like a regular oil lamp. Kerosene. All right, very good. Yeah. Nice. That's good. Um, um, David, yeah. holding the the climbing gear, would I know uh, what's special about it, or do I need to attune? You really want to test it out, uh, but you 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 you're holding it, and you really want to test it out, and you go and you notice that the the end the end of the the one pinton that's already tied off, you know, has like that round ring. And you notice the inside of that ring is super well worn, as if that's as if it's been spun, uh, like on a finger, quite a bit. So it's almost like a flail. 
like a flail. Uh, yeah, it almost it almost kind of strikes you as a weapon. It's definitely doesn't feel aggressive, but it definitely like kind of looks like that. It almost looks like it's designed to be like thrown. I'll hang on to it. Cool. So what's left is the um, the letter, right? The, the letter. Uh, you guys got the lantern. Um, I keep having to move back and forth between. Yeah, I know. Uh, but I actually know what I have uh, these things called now. Uh, the war horn, I think, is the only thing you guys haven't uh, figured out who's carrying. Um. I'm going to look at uh, Reed and I'm going to be like, hey, fool, you look like someone who would uh, blow into a warhorn. Uh, I've never blown into a warhorn before. Hey, you're allowed to get First on your time. knees. I'll, sh I'll show you. <laughs> oh, I'll, but, uh, I'll, I'll hand it. Please hand it to Kaitha. I'd love a demonstration. <laughs> uh, also, very obviously, with a magical aura for those of you who touch this item. I'm going to go to grab it to like make the joke and be like, ooh. Like, oh fuck! And I'm gonna kind of drop it for a second. What yeah, happened? that's just not no warhorn, fool. That's just uh, magic. Pick it up, fool. I'll I'll pick it up. Yeah. I'm I'm filling up my my water, so I can't write anything down just yet. Uh yeah, man. I mean, you pick that you pick that bitch up, and it uh. It's uh, it's got that same you know like you're holding a magic shield you know what a magic item feels like in your hand like it's got uh -huh. it's obviously a different flavor of magic but it's definitely got that same like vibe coming off of it you know like this is this this does something like your shield does something this does uh -huh. something well I I'd say we could try it out but I don't know that I want to try it in goblin territory or uh, orc territory. <sighs> Can you can you sense any any wariness or any presence on it? Um, let me see. I think I have detect magic. I don't. Um, so um, is there is there anybody who can inspect this for me? Uh, yeah, fool. We got people. We got this puto, and I'm gonna point at a test. He's probably reading a book. Uh, and it's I'm gonna be like, we... spiders and friends. Yeah, uh, and I'm gonna be like, yeah, fool. But I mean, and I'm gonna kind of point at the su like looking at the the sun coming up and go, it is getting pretty uh, early morning. We probably want to get going. Maybe we That's can good. inspect this on the way. Good That's idea. Good. That's a good point. All right, lead the way. Um, <clears throat> can we grab one of like the smaller tents, or is that not needed for like where we're gonna camp later? You guys have I was... no idea where you're going. And what's going to be needed? Um, yeah, because up to, up to this point, the map only the maps that we have go up to um, <clears throat> past the uh, up to the pass, right? Yeah, basically where you guys are standing are where all the modern maps end. It might help us blend in if we got one of the smaller tents. You guys will probably need two smaller tents to fit all of you under it just with the number of bodies you have. But hold on, fool. I remember the last time we tried to stay in the enemy's house. Puto fucking knocked it down, that fucking dragon and shit, right? <laughs> so right. if I remember, you know, I am I feel like I'm a man who likes to learn from his mistakes, right? Or I'm an elf who likes to learn from his mistakes, right? Definitely an elf. And one of those mistakes that I made was fucking falling asleep at that house. So I think we should leave the camp and try to find a place off the road to camp at. So any could, trees yeah. or <clears throat> we could walk for an hour and we'll be, you know, uh, -uh fool. No one's walking here. Um, I'm going to use my, uh, last level three spell of the day, a level two spell to cast Mount communal. Cool. 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 And it's exactly seven is what you get, right? Yes. That's or at exactly least that's what it, it was. Uh, I think at least one level ago, so it might be more. Oh, uh, that's a good point. Let me see here. Can Will ride a horse? Uh, no, it's it's an actual. Uh, it's it's actually it's still seven. Okay. Yeah, I mean maybe if I did like greater, like added meta magic to it, I could empower it, but I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna cast uh, that. No go, please. Yeah. Boom! Everyone's got a 
everyone's got a nice uh, a horse of their favorite color. So if you like painted horses, you got a painted horse. If you like brown horses, you got a brown horse. <clears throat> Things like that. What color is your horse? <clears throat> of course, I have a white horse. Spinners or no? Of course. <laughs> It's got a braided, um, it's got like a braided mane and stuff. And it's your but, music. But, but it also has a uh, lokes on as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's very short size, just the same as you. It's like, it's, it's like tatted on the side. <laughs> like poorly done tat- prison, you know, prison yeah. ink. Yeah, it says like Maria with an etch through it, like a line. Then it says like Darla with a line through it. And then... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'll get on my uh, <laughs> my overly overly big horse. <laughs> Even when you get on it, it goes oh. <laughs> wait, 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 I got a, I got a tattoo. I got a tattoo. Stallions before mares. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, yeah. No so I, I just want to clarify. Uh... <laughs> no fat chicks. Uh, our... That's fine. Are you guys riding away from this camp? We are riding towards the direction that we, at least I think we should. All right, fool. So I think we should get past the southern gate. Uh, that like, you know, I know that's at least the direction we got to head towards the ruins, right? And plus, from my understanding, or at least what the rangers told us, the pass is the highest point in the mountains and we should be start going down now. <sighs> so if we start heading that way, and from what that puto bartender told us, it should take us right to the ruins. Do we camp between here and the ruins then? So we're not camping in the ruins? You're, You're finally right. using your brain there, Reed. Uh, and you guys know from your maps, you have at least a few days worth of travel before you get there. You're at about the halfway point. Yeah. Well, yep. Mount up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi ho, silver away! I'm gonna chink, 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 up to my horse. <laughs> Hang on, does he need a hand? Can he get re- Reed onto his horse? He probably would I'm... need a, a hand. I mean, the horse can lay down. Uh, him, Reed, I guess. Reed's, a, Reed's a pretty strong dude. That's true. That's true. He's a pretty <laughs> strong dude. Uh, with mad hops, just jumps up. Uh, Poor but... horse. What are you guys, you guys talked about looking at stuff, looking into things while you're traveling. If you're on horseback, that's a little bit easier. Uh, what, how are you guys going to spend your travel time? Uh, my plan was to uh, look through Tahaka's journal. Okay. I'm going to read, continue reading Spiders and Friends. Okay. I'm just going to stare at my uh, Warhammer with a shit eating grin and just like like a lovable face, just like staring at it. Huh. So a tuning. <laughs> a tuning? <laughs> yeah, it's where you get to like know your weapon better and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. 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 I, think, I think Monzo would be staring at that crudely drawn map that's of nowhere, like at some behind enemy lines intel that he's really... <laughs> He's like really trying to decipher it. He's looking. He's looking at that. Looking up at the road. Looking he's at sure trees. Even though it's somewhere, you know. And this map is the key to finding them. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna be. The, I'm gonna be like the. Everybody's gonna thank me. It's gonna be my big day. <laughs> That's what Monzo's doing. <clears throat> um, before we leave, I'm gonna grab that letter that we got off the boss. And I'm gonna hand it to uh, Sigbert. I'm gonna say like, "Hey, fool, can you read Orcish? Is it even in Orcish?" It is an orcish. <sighs> I'm going to look at... read orcish. <sighs> it's okay, fool. And then I'm going to walk over to A-Test and be like, Hey, fool, put that book down. You got some more reading to do. And I'm going to like hand out my hand with the, with a the thing on it, with a letter. No, I was just reading about the orc-shaped spiders, but a lot of these spiders in this book seem to be named after... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's cool. So here's yeah. a letter... Uh, yeah, can you please follow that? That could be some uh, vital intel moving forward. All right. I read through it. And I'll be like, yeah, and take off. <laughs> uh, 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 Arthur's going to go next to him. 
Are you just starting at the beginning of the journal or are you like looking for something? Like what's your strategy here? I probably would start at the beginning of the journal. If it starts getting boring, then I'd flip through it. Okay. Uh, let me send you the first couple entries then and you can. It's in common. The journal? Yes. The journal is in common. Oh. Hmm. What, what's the what's the name on that journal? I'm gonna look over as he's reading it. I mean, uh, it's Tahaka, that puto, uh, that big puto that we killed on the cannon. The one that uh, you know, that had the warhammer. Is it is it writ- look like it writ- it's written in his script or? As in, is it look like orc handwriting or does it is it all neat and? Hmm. Uh... Uh, what, what would it, does it look like it's neat handwriting or does it look you like a fucking... You don't have his handwriting to compare it to. Um, uh, I guess I would say, does it look like, like a scholarly handwriting or does it, does it look, not look like, like scribbles? No, no, no. Uh, okay. I'd be like, uh, hey, this, um, uh, this fool at least knew common, but, uh, no, nah, it's not, definitely not, uh, uh, academic handwriting. It's not like if, uh, ATES started to write something down. Okay, well... While you're going through that, I may I may have some missing piece here. I'm a, maybe this was torn out somewhere. I'm gonna hold up my my crappy map. Huh. Are you trying I mean, to compare well, it to the to the journal? Not seriously, no. Actually, I guess so. I got I because there is writing on it. So yeah, uh, I guess I would look at the and writing. You look, there are torn out pages in the journal. Uh, they don't match your sheet. But there are pages missing out of the middle of the journal, the, towards the end of the journal. So I'm gonna like I'm gonna look at the look at the map, and then I'm gonna like flip back. I'm gonna flip forward, flip back, and be like, "Hold on, fool!" And it says, "I met a strange man today. He's like still weak from my I'm still weak from my shameful defeat, whatever the fuck that means, and stripped of my weapons. I have no choice but to allow him to like approach. He uh, offered me sorry." doesn't know how to do his O's, offered me a chance to redeem myself and gave me a map to a place near the coast where he claims a friend will find me. He gave me, like, hella food and water, and before I could ask his name, he vanished. And he'll see, I think I'll see where this map leads. Huh. It's a place by the coast? With food and water? Well, no, the guy... <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> The mysterious man gave him food and water. So, yeah. Well, we uh, just got to find the mysterious man for the... Do we want to find a mysterious man? He has food and water, so... I mean, I some of us... I think, I think I you're fixated on food. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know about you, putos, but our journey has been rifled with mysterious men. It's not very uh, specific. So what's one more mysterious man? Is that what you mean? Exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, during this time, I'm going to, uh, while we're kind of writing, uh, I'm assuming we're kind of getting farther away. I'm going to be like, professor, professor fool. Yes. Uh, hey, while we're writing, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of look down and just be like, kind of, you know, like, just like shake off the, the exhaustion yeah, can you try to find something, uh, or a place where we can uh, spend the night, like safely? Uh, God. Yes, I'll take keep my eyes out on the horizon. Uh, roll survival check as you're looking for a place to camp. Uh, a task you got handed this letter. Are you doing anything with it? Uh oh, did he break another rib? Good talk. <laughs> hey, Tesk, are you there? He's taking I hear Cora out. Did you mute yourself on accident? He's he's taking, he, he put oh, a message. Right we can he, hear you, but we, but we can't? No, no, no. He put he a message, put a message. In, taking Cora outside. Oh. So he probably doesn't yeah. even know he has a letter. Okay, that makes sense. No. Um, um, Dave, David, 17. 17? Oh, oh, oh. Great. No, yeah. you guys are still traveling. That's for when, you, when you're done traveling. So... I will write that result down and you guys can keep going. Yep. Reed had a thing he wanted to do while we're traveling. Shoot. Uh, I want to read my holy text, but I am 
keeping a particular eye out for any stories or passages that mention dragons. Hmm. Okay. Um, looking looking at Reed, what does your holy text look like? Uh, it is a like, it's a like dark brown leather bound book, but it's got my my sword in. It's got um, the same sword that's on my my chainmail. It's on the it's on the front of the text. A hey, fool, why when you open your book, the pages stick together? It's an old book. Got yeah, pictures in there, or <laughs> no? And then like crude drawings are gonna fall out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna look at my map and look at the crude drawings falling out. Uh, like those are those are those are private. It's like a stick figure with just like crudely drawn big tits on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, oh my god! Uh, I'm so I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna get back to my reading. Okay. Um, <laughs> there is uh, there is a. There is actually a story of Iomade uh, fighting alongside a gold dragon in the uh, before the first age, uh, the time mm. before time, and uh, it is you know it is only legend at this point. There is literally not a soul alive who could verify it. Um, you said you the know, first first age before, before the, first the first age? age in the time before time. Ooh. The land before time. Ooh. Okay. And you said nobody can verify it, and what else? Uh, all that exists is an ancient illustration of the battle, which I posted in chat. Oh. Okay. Cool. Sorry, I'm trying to alt tab here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that was badass. Didn't yeah. I Wait, wait a minute. The dragon's fighting with the holy warrior, it looks like. Um, right. I, that's what I said. That's exactly what I said. There's an, a story of her fighting with a dragon in the time before time. I did not say against. I said with. And that's an interesting right, looking right, right, right. shield. That is an interesting looking shield. Um, it's not a tower shield, though. How how would it, How does it look compared to the shield that I have currently? Uh, there's not enough detail in the painting for you to be able to tell. They're the same color. Not a, okay, okay. They're the same color. They're the same color. Interesting. Which is like a like an obsidian color. I think that's what you said, right? Like a no, like a like a shining steel, like a like a like a oh, uh, oh perfectly okay, okay, okay. unblemished stainless with a mirror finish. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Uh. Silver rolls a 17, uh, and he finds what looks like an excellent place to camp, uh, but it appears that there is another figure uh, here already. Uh, short of stature, humanoid, goat legs. Huh? Uh, and there's uh, and all that's all you can see are the goat legs shaking and trembling in a bush nearby, Arthur, as you're scoping out the, uh, the campsite. I see a wonderful spot to camp, but there's a goat-legged figure next to it. I'm gonna be like, oh, is that? That's probably him, and I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna ride up to him and be like, "Hey, puto, don't eat me!" Hey, quit, quit, uh, quit your shivering, fool. It's us. Little, you see his little horns, like, you know, poke through the bush, he looks, and his eyes light up. Oh, it is! And he, like, comes out, and he, like, stands up, and he clomps out to look at all of you, and he said, and he counts. Wow, it looks like you all made it alive! They didn't even eat any of you! That's right, we could handle ourselves. Early history shows us how... Oh. Did you, uh... did you get them all? Did you find my wine? Uh, yeah, we found wine. I, 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 I'm gonna. Can I? Can I? Uh, can I? Well, cut right off, now, he's the one. Can I cut off out. Reed? Can I cut off Reed? Uh, roll the reflex save. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see here. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use yours, Joe. Okay. Reed, 
reflex is plus six, so a natural 20. Uh, you, you cut him in after we found, but you need to think fast and finish the sentence if you're going to cut him off. Uh, we found the boss, fool, and uh, we took care of him from there. But uh, I don't, I, I can't recall if we found any wine. What's so important about it? It's just, I was looking forward to drinking it. What about my pan flute? Oh, uh, I, I actually, I think we found that. And I'm going to kind of rummage and go, hey, any of you put those, uh, picked up that uh, pansy ass flute? I, I'd like to start playing it, like from the back. <laughs> and uh, roll me a performance <laughs> check. <laughs> are untrained. you yeah are you untrained in the pan flute <laughs> I, n- I don't even know where to blow <laughs> well i guess we're gonna find out let's go play like a blow it on the straw Oof, it's so, not seven good yeah untrained uh, untrained seven. Seven. you pull it out <laughs> and the uh, uh just going back and forth between two notes and he says, my flutes! And he clops over to you and attempts, attempts to snatch it out of your hands. I'll let him, I'll let him snatch it. I won't pull away. And I'll say, uh, I, was, I was just getting good. <laughs> and he's, he's, uh, he's like, oh, like super intently like inspecting it. He says, those brutes, they cracked one of the pipes. He's, I knew it was off. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and he says, well, it's better than nothing, I suppose. Is, is, is the way clear? Can, can I make my way back to the forest? Uh, you can try. We didn't see any more orcs on our way here, but like that, uh, that fort's on fire, fool. So you better, uh, you better be okay trying to get around it or waiting here until it, uh, fully burns down. Uh, can we see like the billowing smoke still in the, oh, behind yeah. us? You can see okay. the flames still behind you, because uh, they're because it's on the highest point, so it's yeah, a point yeah. of light and smoke uh, rising up behind you as you guys are starting your descent down the uh, crooked pass here. Uh, and uh, Fawn looks up at the at the pillar of smoke and swallows hard, and says, "I've n- never been this far south before. They say there are giants that live down here." Fool. I think everyone's a giant to you, right? I, well, perhaps. But Elm <laughs> tells the stories too, and he's pretty big. Yeah, that's right. He is a pretty, he is a big puto. Well, I think you got a few options here, and by a few, I mean dos. You can either a head back, and uh, hopefully no orcs that ran away during the raid, like you know, don't come back, or, or b. You uh, stay here with us. Well, where are you going? We're going to the ruins that way. I'm going to point south. Oh, no. I don't want to go any farther that way than I have to. Uh, well, then, what would you decide, fool? Are you all... Uh, what are you doing for the rest of the day? Well... As you know, and I'm going to kind of like, I'm going to be kind of like swaying because I'm like barely able to kind of keep awake. Like my eyes are drooping. Yeah. It's like a dog trying to stay awake. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be like, well, as you know, we've been fighting for like hella hours and I need some sleep. I could go for some rest, not in a cage myself. Were you all going to camp? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll stay here with you for rest and then we'll part ways. Sounds good to me. But you're not taking any of my rations, fool. I already got one that I have to take care of, and I'm going to point at Will. He says, that, I that's fine. I, I found some berries and, and things already. I'll, I should be fine, thanks. I just wish I had some wine. Did you uh, find a good place that we could all camp at? Uh, and... Arthur leads you guys around the corner to... Arthur, you. hey uh To, a, like, a cliffside area that's wide enough for you guys to actually set up a campsite. 
uh, that's not just like jagged peaks and cliffs and you know like it's just starting to wipe now and it's not a you know it's not a consistent gradient like sometimes it's wider sometimes it's narrower um, but he you know did manage to find this uh, this nice spot here and it looks like it's starting to get grassy too yeah, I mean, right? it's, uh, yeah. It's, it, these are grasses and shrubs and, you know, things. Like, there's no, like, big trees or anything uh, except the errant one here and there. Uh, but, yeah, mm -hmm. there's uh, it's it's a little less rocky, um, and you can start to make out a little bit of definition below you. Um, but, you know, it's like you can see all those little trees and that little river down there. Uh, it's quite a drop. I have a quick question. Last I heard before I had to dip out for a minute, you guys took your magical ponies, your magical tatted ponies uh -huh. somewhere. Yeah, and, uh, now we're, we're heading down the mountain now and going towards the ruins. And we're going to camp for one night. Guy, I guess, named Arthur. Arthur's one of the, Arthur, Arthur is Stover. Arthur is one of the adventurers. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, go on. I'm all caught up. <laughs> <laughs> A monster is going to walk some over. Random around. person David was playing. Uh, okay, no, yeah, that's, the fawn. that's the fawn. That's the random fire. person. Is the fawn? Is the is the half goat? You know, uh, Phil from Hercules guy. That's uh, you know, Mister yeah. Dumbness mopping around. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Carry on. It's his name. <laughs> I don't I'd know like, if by anybody the way, wrote. I said it. I don't know if anybody wrote down his name. No. No, I did not. Yeah, by the way, fool, uh, uh, you know, I remember us saving you and shit, but in the heat of battle, I kind of forgot your name. He says, uh, my name is, uh, I, I'm, I'm Fornus, F-O-R-N-U-S, Fornus, uh, For Fornus the, the Fawn, what? Uh, and you all are? Uh, Fawns, I need to meet you. And stick my hand out. And I'll shake it. Arthur, I'll give a nice salute. Arthur Struva, at your service. Uh, can I throw a look at his accent? Just says hi. Hello. <clears throat> I'm Reed. Put my hand out. Hello, Reed. I'm just going to raise my hand and say Sigbert. <clears throat> Sigbert? And, uh, and I'm a Tesk. And a Tesk. Well, thank you again for releasing me from my captivity. If you find yourself in the forest, I would uh, be happy to return the favor if you find yourself in need. Uh, uh, yeah, of course, fool. I mean, you know, we're, we're not... Well, some other part, you know, adventuring parties may be more apathetic to put little, small little putos like you. You know, we understand, like, what kind of world we're living in here. We got to protect each other, right? Make this world, like, a better place and shit. Look at me getting all fucking optimistic. Well, the, like, well, the whole world, that's, uh, the forest is my whole world. And, and, I, and I can make that a better place, I, I think, with... Lots of wine. <laughs> the whole it. forest. Starting to sound a lot like of Ithar over here. <clears throat> uh, so I'm assuming we're going to start setting up camp then? Yeah, mm -hmm. this is your guys' resting place okay. for the night. Cool. Yep. <clears throat> uh, which means that uh, anybody who wants to spend any time with any items, uh, read anything. Uh... Oh, Tyler, you're back now, yeah? Yeah. You got you got handed a letter, buddy. It's an orcish, and uh, you're one of the few people who can read it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's in Discord yeah. in the private chat, in our, and I sent it to you. Gotcha. Uh, <clears throat> so, I'm going to. Oh, oh, true. Good. Uh, so this this letter is pretty interesting. Okay, well, what does it say? Does, uh, don't don't uh, you know try to lead us on here. Just what does it say? I mean, it says the uh, the trinkets I've given your clan in pale in comparison to the glory and riches you will be granted in the months to come. Find the shield, pick edge town clean, kill the wandering nuisances, and return to me. Build a gate at the gap and camp there, outside the ranger's influence. 
be wary. There will be a certain, there will certainly be a spell touched or two. I think this translates to swift travels. And then it's signed Amazru the Saltwing. It's that guy again. Doesn't, doesn't sound good. Hey, quick question. Cross. Amazru, how is that spelled? M-A-M-A-M-A-M-A-Z-R-U. God damn it, I gotta look at it. Give me a second, guys. M-A-M-A-M-A-M-A-M-A-Z-R-U. I now have a, a dedicated character area in my journal. <laughs> I've had for a while. <laughs> I used to just, it used to be a running like list of like timeline status, and now it's like okay, I gotta clean this shit up. It's too many people that I've met. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I'm, be, I'm gonna look at uh, 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 Fornis the Fawn and be all like, I'm Mazu. The salt wing. Does that uh, make any sense to you? I've never heard of him. Hmm. Well, obviously he tried to organize these fucking orcs, right? And he shrugs. He says, I thought that big orc was in charge. See, here's the thing, uh, Fornus. It's Fornus, right? Fornus? Fornus. Fornus yeah. the fun? Fornus? Fornus the fun. Hmm. There's always a bigger orc. And it may not always be another orc. Shit. Learned that one from a year again. It's a dragon sometimes. And that's what I'm kind of thinking, fool. The salt wing. Not many things can uh, are intelligent yet also have wing in their uh, in their title. Now I'm gonna do title in quotes. Hmm. Do you think he calls himself the salt wing, or did he, could he just self appoint himself that? I mean, it's in his signature, right? He can't just he can't just start writing that and expect people to call him that. <laughs> I mean, you write it down enough. I mean, people start calling. I mean, shit, we're calling him that right now, right? Uh, oh, you mean a Mazaru? <laughs> 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 I mean, if he, I don't know how he's gonna. You know, maybe he maybe he will want to talk about it. Maybe he'll be open to the conversation. Didn't you puto say that you saw something flying by us pretty fast earlier? Yeah, it looked like a black dragon. Oh, what? It looked like a black... You think he could be the salt wing fool? Shit. <laughs> Never even thought about that. Good work, detective. Okay, you didn't make that connection before, so I don't need, like, the sassiness attached to that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I think... After, you know, being up for 24 hours, I think we're doing pretty fucking good here, right? I'm going to take a sassy turn and then go <laughs> set up my, my tent up. <laughs> Hop off my uh, my magical mount, you know, like in one leap. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to instantly despawn it as soon as he, uh, as soon as he <laughs> hops <I> fall. off. <laughs> <laughs> you pull the rug you out. Get, you get halfway off. You go to push yourself against the horse and there's nothing to push against. You just kind of like do a weird, uh, like... Um, uh, symmetrical swimming Double. move and then just fall because you tried to jump and there wasn't any. <laughs> I think Monzo would fall like Peter Griffin, you know, with his limbs and stuff. Oh, yeah, up and toward. oh his arms behind his... <laughs> Arthur's going, hey, we need everyone healthy for the next engagement. Oh, I, can, I can keep first watch whenever we go to sleep. I'm all, don't worry, fool. This fool's not skipping meals. He's pretty healthy. Thank you. <laughs> All right, what is that everybody else doing? <laughs> Leaping. Because yeah, you guys all have, uh, in a long rest period, you all have two hours of time to do whatever you want, uh, craft things, study things, read things, you know, like downtime, read basically. Uh, and yeah. then, you know, talking's always free. Uh, and then at some point, you guys will need to set up your watch order. Yeah, Dave, uh, as we talked about for the, for like that pistol that I'll be crafting over time. I know that'll take like two days, so just initiating it now that we're at camp, okay. at least it starts to be initiated. That takes two days of downtime, of, st of spending all day in town, 
crafting all day. So you can start that process, but it'll take you more than two days if you're just doing it in two hour chunks. Just as a full that's start. that's why I'm doing. I'm telling you now. Cool. Then I will. I will start gonna... a tally for that and note that you have two hours of work under your belt. You went with the pistol. Uh, yeah, we're going for the pistol here. Cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue reading that journal. Okay. Uh, if you're going in order, I will just send you the next few entries. Mm-hmm. Reed is going to eat some rations, <clears throat> and then he is going to pray. Uh, and I'll uh, send you what he's going to pray for or about. Is that, is that uh, okay? So it didn't space out correctly. Various mundane travel tales and encounters is like a, that represents multiple journals of, of mundane. I went this far today. I camped in this spot. I found a nice tree. You know, it, it just kind of represents gotcha. time passing. Um, and then the quotes are like a, like an individual entry. Um, and so that's the next one. That's the next meaningful entry. Here's entry the entry after that. Is the uh, entry after that? Um, okay. So I'm sorry, Reed. What were you doing? Eating and praying. Eating and praying. Uh, anything in particular Eat. you're praying about? I'm gonna send it to you. Okay, great. Eat, pray, love. Oh God. Uh, anybody else? Uh, Sigbert, you've been quiet. What are you doing with your time, bud? I'm. I'm probably just gonna eat and then kind of look at that um, potion with no label for those two hours and then go to sleep. Okay. Uh, you spend a couple hours with this potion of a thick, viscous fluid. Uh, and I think it's an intelligence check, unless you have a specific identify. Uh, just roll a check on it. And add either your intelligence modifier or if you have some kind of, like, identify or any other skill that you want to pitch to me that you're using. Uh, if you can justify it, I'll let you use it. But uh, there is some skill involved in not being an alchemist and taking a random potion and figuring out what it is without tasting it. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to do it. It's intelligence. That would be an eight. Uh, you're not able to identify what it is, but you're pretty sure one of the ingredients is blood from something foul smelling. Nice. Uh, and you're more than welcome to roll a check tomorrow night on it if you, uh, or anytime you have downtime if you want to spend more time with it. Um, that role represents right. your best chance to, or your best effort to figure out what it is today. Um, okay, so that's great. Arthur's working on that. Kaithar, anything in particular? Nope. Uh, I'm going to get cuddled up by the fire of my little sleeping sack and uh, cuddle with my uh, hammer. With your, new, with your new hammer? Yep. Uh, Tesk, anything in particular? No, nothing in particular. Uh, I feel like I'm missing somebody. Uh, somebody um, Monzo. Monzo, what are you doing? Uh, Monzo's going to spend time with the uh, the throwable climbing thing that he's looking at, and I'm also going to eat some of those mushrooms that I got. Uh, I'm going to be. I'm going to take them in the order you gave them to me. So for the the throwable climbable thing, is there anything in particular that you're going to do with it to try to figure out what it how it works, or are you just going to take a uh, whatever role I tell you? You can improve your chances. No, of I think what you're doing. Yeah, so I th I think I'd be sitting there eating and like you know looking at it. Um, it is it like a bola? You know, what I I'd throw it around um, the branch of a tree and then get it back. It, uh, you know, putting yeah, my putting my finger in the little. Okay, so as you put your finger in the little thing and you go to throw it at the tree branch, the whole thing phases out of existence, and then you look up and the the spike is embedded in the, tra the, the the limb of the tree, and the rope is in your hand. 
like a grapple almost. Is yeah, that but, you, but you didn't even throw it. You like it. Ba- it barely left your hand. You don't even know if you were throwing it on target. It like the moment it was out of your hand, bloop, it was connected and the rope was in your hand instead. And the tool itself was on the tree. Embedded in the tree, as if somebody had knocked it in with a hammer. Ooh. Monzo like. And you give huh. it just the lightest tug with the intention of releasing it, and it whoosh, coils back up in your hand. Any idea how, how so I'm gonna test it. How long is it, would I think? It's got a fifty foot rope. Cool. Uh, and then I'm also gonna eat one of those mushrooms, I don't know. Oh, uh, I need a constitution uh say, or excuse me, uh yeah, constitution saving throw for that one. Nice. Yikes. About 50% of the time it works out, so let's see. A plus three constitution, so uh, 17. Uh, so that, that's a success. Uh, these things do not settle well. Um, you, you, know, you don't know if they're the kind of thing that you need to cook to make them better or if they're the kind of thing that you can boil down into a toxin. You're like, not sure, but you know that uh, you can't eat them like this. How was the taste, though? Um, earthy, a little bitter. Uh, like a hint of sulfur. I may have a second one, but I'm done now. <laughs> it's an it's an indica. It's gonna... <laughs> oh, you've just discovered. <laughs> yeah. I know. You guys all see Monzo's eyes go wide. He walks to the edge of the cliff and says, "Look at the rainbow bridge." Goes to take a step and falls off. No. Uh... What if we're the dragon? <laughs> um, so Monzo's going to say, uh, "Yeah, I'll, I'll take the first watch if somebody wants to stay up with me." I'll, I'll stay up with you. Uh, Simone's okay. going to fall asleep reading the journal. Okay, sounds good. Uh, there, it's not a particularly long journal. Do you want the rest of the entries before bed? Uh, as of right now, yes, because of that second entry was... <laughs> I'm not yes. saying, you said if you got bored, you'd stop reading it, so I'm just going to let you read it until you are either I, bored I, or yeah, want to keep reading I, it. I, that, that's, that first part it was in, second part, I'm enthralled. I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me see what the last, but I am, uh, but I'm, uh, but I would imagine being awake for more than 24 hours and how much will I exerted, uh, will's going to despawn. He's going to go back to his plane and, uh, I'm going to learn all this while also being like, you know, succumb to sleep essentially. Got you. Um, so here's the next one is just generic travel entries. Uh, this is the section of course it is. That has some pages missing. Uh, and then there are two more entries after the missing pages. Here is one. And here is the last one. Uh, okay, great. Uh, Okay, Monzo, uh, you're staying up. Uh, is anybody watching with you or watching after you? Have we figured all that stuff out yet? I believe uh, a Tesk is staying yeah. up. You believe a Tesk yeah. is staying up? Great. Uh, anybody else taking the other three watches? What's my second watch? Second watch? For to Sigbert? Third watch? I'll, I'll take third. To Reed, last watch. I can take the last watch. Last watch, great. Uh, let's get a perception check from my boys staying up for the first watch. That would be Monzo and Atesk. Twenty-two for me. Twenty. Hopes that it's so bright out, I guess. Uh, yeah, it is uh, it is definitely bright out. I'm sorry, it was what in 20? Uh, 22. 22 and 20. Uh, yeah, so you guys have the first watch. You're definitely sleepy, cake, sleepy cakes. 
but you've got uh, this this huge beautiful vantage point. I mean, you're on uh, this cliff, and you guys are up for your watch, and you do see that winged figure uh, because you are looking for it this time, and it is much closer to you. Uh, you're able to tell that it's definitely not a dragon, at least not completely. It had wings, and it had the scales, but it also had fur and some spikes, and it wasn't close enough for you to get a lot of details from it, but you guys are alert and know to not just look on the ground level now and to also keep your eyes in the sky. And Monzo specifically has been looking over his shoulder regularly for this winged figure. Uh, and you guys are able to spot it for longer than just a second or two. You get a solid seven or eight seconds as it soars across, spiked tail behind it, uh, darting between two uh, relatively close mountain peaks. How soon into the watch did this happen? Was this like right away? Yeah, I mean, this is within this is within an hour. Your watch is only two hours long. So if it's short enough, I would I would go into um, Simone's tent to see if he's still awake. As soon as I saw the the winged figure figure, he's enthralled by a journal. Of course, he's awake and reading. I'm a whisper because I know he likes you know mm -hmm. quiet time. Going to be hey, uh, right. in that book, those entries it refers to. I'm back. Like, huh? <laughs> Whoa, fuck. Hey, hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what's up, fool? That entry, it, it, does it refer to uh, like a gift and meet him somewhere? I know with, with uh, the note that was found, um, I guess I, it doesn't, doesn't um, a task have the note? A task, a task has the note, the note yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so I'd be, you know, <clears throat> motion for a test to come over. And then I'd say... Uh, Maybe, maybe that that big orc he wasn't the one that the note was referring to maybe maybe that's the one that that met the mysterious man fool let me tell you something there's a lot that we did not know and uh we might want to talk about it with the whole party and i'm gonna be kind of like flipping through the pages uh i'm gonna be like uh we might be in like some danger I, I think. All right, we'll sleep tight. <laughs> oh, what'd you say, a desk? I think we're gonna be fine. Don't yeah. you? Uh, I mean, uh, we might be doing like exactly what he wants us to do, but like, I think we should discuss this with like everyone so we kind of all know like what we're getting ourselves into. Because uh, it's a lot. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. I'm all, let, let's uh, finish our rest, get some food in us, and then uh, I'll lay down the details. Do you need me to tuck you in, or are you, are you squared away? <laughs> I, sleep on, I sleep on top of my blanket. I don't actually like it. I like this being... A dexter thing, or... It, it, yeah, and that uh, like I haven't got to wash the blanket in a while, so like it smells like my dirty it's got ass. A lot, of, so. a lot of bo. Yeah, fool. Yeah, it stinks oh, in here. Disgusting. I was gonna say yeah. it smelled like that bar we went into with all the sailors. So like it's just something comfy to lay on for right now. Okay, I'll finish off my watch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you and Tesk you and Tesk have some chit chat and uh the rest of your watch passes relatively uneventfully. Who's next? It's world building. It's world building, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that would be Sigbert would be next. Uh roll your perception check for me. My man, Sigbert. It'd be a seven. Ooh, a seven, he says. But I rolled a one, so. Right, yeah. Uh, give me just a second here. I lost my, uh, I lost my chart. A seven. Uh, you are 
too distracted by your own hunger and exhaustion to properly, uh, all you hear all night is the rumbling of your own stomach and uh, the beating of your own heart in your ears from, uh, from your hard travels uphill and through battle. All right. Uh, and your two hours passes. Who's the uh, who's my, who's my next one? Is this the third watch now? Third watch. That's me. Okay, great. Fifteen. I'm sorry, it's 15? Correct. Correct. Uh, uh, This this is a particularly brisk and cold morning, especially up here at altitude. And so you are watching around for intruders and, uh, you know, and remaining vigilant. And about halfway through, you glance over your shoulder to look at your parties and you see that uh, Fornus the Fawn has, like, cuddled up next to Kythar and is, like, back-to-back with huh. him, like, huddled for warmth. Not to butt. Can I, can I try and draw that? <laughs> uh, yeah, roll me a... Roll me a... I don't know what that would be. I think it's normally an intelligence check, so roll me an intelligence check, please. Intelligence, okay. <laughs> Can I draw that? Nat 20 if there ever was one. Please. Not bad. bad. That's a a 14. That's a 14. At least it's not negative. Uh, Yeah, I mean, you know, you get Kythar pretty well uh, because you know a lot of the details of his face. Uh, Fornish you don't, so you just kind of like... You're like, uh, we're going to bury Fornus's head in Kythar's neck, and then I don't have to draw his face. And you're like, hmm, I don't really know how to draw his hooves either. You're like, that's okay, they're tucked under Kythar's legs. And by the time you're done with your drawing, like, you've drawn them both, but uh, it looks way more intimate than it was because you didn't know how to draw certain elements of Fornus. Hmm. I am going to put it in my holy text. And I'm going to hang up. (laughs) Cool. I love it. I love it. You guys are going to have all kinds of stuff to talk about tomorrow. Uh, Who is my last watch of the night? Arthur. Arthur, roll me a perception check, please. You got it. Go, Arthur. Woo! We got a 27. Oh, a 27. You are sitting and, you know, listening and watching, and you see a giant eagle fly in, not overhead, but underneath you, soaring over the, uh, the forest in the valley between these impossible ridges. And you're, like, watching very closely, and you watch it, like, dive down, pick pick up some kind of other mammalian creature, and then, like, fly off back in the direction that it came from. You get, like, a little nature documentary scene there, uh, and uh, and get to witness nature being metal as fuck. And otherwise, your watch passes uneventfully. Okay. Uh, At this point... Arthur is going to go through the camp and check on everybody and see if people are getting ready or not. Uh, everybody should be where they should be, with the exception of uh, Fornis, cuddled up with Kythar. We will pick you guys back up in uh, after a super short five-minute break, because I have to pee. So. <laughs> cool. So we'll come back in five. Awesome. See you in five. Cool. Cool.
are we are, are we all back? Are all the players back? Yep. Yeah. Stand by. Cool. Then uh, it's the next morning. You guys all awake. Uh, I, I believe Arthur is the last watch, so he's the one who's kind of responsible for waking people up, or anybody who wakes up early uh, is for sure going to run into Arthur because he's the other guy awake right now. What uh, What are you guys going to do? Uh, do we have, um, like anything to cook or is it just like dried jerky and stuff? Uh, somebody wants to roll me a survival check and go see what they can find. That's, uh, they're more than welcome to do that. Sure. While they're doing that, I'm going to pull a pot out, uh, pan out and put the mushrooms on the pan. Cool. Sounds good. All of them or just some of them? Handful. It's going to be about half. There's only two or three handfuls in here total, probably. Okay. Cool. Final? 18. 18. Uh, yeah, dude, on an 18, uh, you find a goat up here, straight up, uh, which if you like, you can... Uh, you, you, I just don't know if you're not morally... I doubt Arthur is morally opposed, but uh, you can bring that back. He's not. If you like. He's hungry. Yeah. Huh. So Arthur comes back with a big-ass goat slung over his shoulders. How and does I do a pers- respond? That's what I was going to say. What's that? <laughs> How does Fornis respond? Reed and I both look over at Fornis when, the goat <laughs> sho- when a dead goat shows up. I'm, I'm going to like elbow uh, um, Bonzo. Be like, hey. <laughs> uh, Fornis looks like he's about to vomit. <laughs> Sorry, Fornis. I'm be like, the I, camp's got to eat. I don't know if we should eat it in front of him. Well, you won't have to. Don't worry. I will be taking my leave now. Uh, thank you all very much for the protection and the sleep. And he gives you like a little like curtsy bow uh, and turns to make his way back down, back up the mountain, I guess. Um, As he's um, leaving, uh, I was going to say, um, check my... I'm going to... I'm going to say, tell, tell Elm, you know, we, we send our regards. We're, we're, tell him we're headed south. And then I was, I was going to kind of describe where we found Elm in that clearing. Okay. Just so he kind of knows where he's going, I guess. Yeah. And he says, I will. He's then he points over to Simone. He says, I promised Simone that I would do that already. But yes, I will do that for you as well, Monzu. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Monzu. And he the the pleasure's mine. <laughs> and he pleasure's mine. Uh, Furnace. <laughs> Furnace. Uh, gives you another curtsy and uh, is on his way. You guys have a delicious goat for breakfast uh, and have time to discuss anything you might like. We had to cut up real thin in order to cook it fast. <laughs> nice. Oh, I like mine medium. Oh, medium. <laughs> Cut it a little thicker for, for Monzo. <laughs> um, Here. So, <laughs> so while everybody's kind of going over, um, uh, you know, going over, you know, breakfast, so, uh, Simone's just going to be like, so like, hold on, one second. Mm, very good goat. <laughs> I haven't had goat like this in like a while. Mm. Um, mm, damn. Uh, so like I was reading like the journal and shit, right? And, uh, like a few things, you know, popped out to me and I'm going to open up the journal and I like, uh, you know, bent the page at, at places that I thought that, that are pretty important. They're all dog ears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the test recognizes the sight of a well-read book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it looks like uh, uh, Tahaka actually went down to the ruins that we're heading down to. And I, and I quote, uh, quote, uh, I have found the place like the, on the stranger's map. It appears to be ruins of a city from ages past. I cannot shake the feeling I'm being like, watched like prey. No, that's not quite like it. <clears throat> More like fly before being smashed by an unseen hand. I do not like it nor does it appear to be friends that will be finding me there. So he, like, explores the ruins and shit. 
But he says, I don't know how uh, who the stranger was, but I know his ally. A great scaled beast, eyes like sapphires, as I like show my uh, glove. Uh-huh. Uh, gleaming in like purple, uh, blue-purple glow, which emanates deep from his throat. Uh, he makes uh, his bed on hella riches from beyond comprehension and wealth of an empire, the collection of ages. He calls himself Asmaru the Salt Wing. See, I told you, fool. That sounds like a fucking dragon, fool. Oh, and I'm gonna oh. like hit the, I'm gonna, like hit the ground around me, you know. And I'm gonna point at Monzo. I'm like, I told you, fool. I told you. Right, right. So, when he stomps, you... Mon. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. How, how do you spell Azuru? Uh, it's, it says right here, A M A Z R U, the Salt Wing. I think that's the creepy thing that's been in my dreams. What? Wait. Uh, what? <laughs> this yeah. is new information. Yeah, I've been having this dream. I didn't really think anything of it until now. But it was of like a, like a big castle. It's on like an island. And then there's a, like a twisted figure. It's like a large, a large monster. It's like scanning the horizon, looking for something. I don't know, maybe do you think it's him? <laughs> Well, let me keep reading, fool. He said he offered to share a portion of his wealth with him in exchange for his service. And uh, it looks like I'm going to point at um, uh, Kaithar's hammer. That is from Asmu's, uh, like collection because that was given to uh, to Tahaka. Um, Wait, Tahaka's the guy that we killed, right? That's right, fool. Uh, the, uh, and the first task that was given to him is to find, uh, to seek out one of his kin, a young black dragon n- named Nox the Pitiful. And I'm going to put my hands up. Oh, fuck. Not this guy so, again. So, Amazru is looking for Nox? Who has made his home deep in the marshlands. So, hold on. I, there's still, like, some few more sentences here. He does not wish for me to speak with him, but instead to capture one of his kobold people and interrogate him as the events of the last few days. He says a shield has been taken from him, and he wants to know uh, how and why. Who has it and why. So, like, he gave me a belt, which gives me strength of the giant, armored me for my journey, and uh, report to him. uh, And if my report pleases him, he'll promise me a beautiful heavy maul. And then I got a little bit left here. Looks like this fool, like, comes back. Uh, you know, and kind of reunites his clan. Uh, he ready to, and he pledges his ca- clan to Asmru. They call them, uh, the Saltwing gives him this clan called the Wingless Gifts from his vast collection. Uh, uh, let's see here. And I'm just kind of, uh, he's just kind of, uh, you know, uh, outlining some of the things. Like he told them to go build the fort like in the past. Uh, and to, you know, for, uh, uh, thin out the forest and slaughter creatures. And, uh, you know, Tahaka's uh, pretty happy about doing that, right? He uh, likes killing all the creatures and thinning out the forest, as orcs do, as Kaithar would know. Uh, the second part of the task is to find and return the shield. He never asked for such a task or was given... Uh, wait, he has never asked for such a task of us or given so generously of his own collection before. So it must be like something really important to him and prized. The wingless have instructed to bring uh, it first, uh, bring it to me first when they find it, and I might inspect it before returning it to its rightful owner. He also told us to keep moving north and of the bay until we are through the gap. And uh, here's here's some uh, here's some uh, you know this is kind of important. Kaithar, Kaithar, and I'm gonna snap. Kaithar. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, I'm yeah. sorry, Anthony. My mic died for just a second. What did you, what was that last like? Like he said, last uh, five seconds. He said he told us to keep moving north through uh, of the bay until we are through the gap. So like the side that we're on, right? He says the giants dwell in in our area and around the ruins we are heading towards. Uh, they do not in, uh, and they don't interfere with the great one. And I'm assuming the great one means uh, the the salt wing, uh, and cannot pass the gap but may cause trouble for us once outside of the immediate territory, which I assume means the the ruin. The smaller one lacks the wit of the orcish people and should be outwitted quite easily. The elemental ones are more dangerous and to be avoided 
if all at all possibility, if all at possible. So what do we learn from this? We learn that A, it seems like he's in the ruin. At least that's what it says here. B, uh, he instructed all the orcs to do this and they called themselves the wingless, which we just kind of ran through uh, like a bunch of putos. And uh, 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 three, <laughs> uh, it looks like all the shit that we got from them is from his collection. And D, uh, it seems like there's like hella giants around here and that little uh, fruity fawn was in, uh, wasn't lying. And Amazaru wants this shield, and I'm going to point to mine. That's correct, fool. And it sounds like we're kind of walking into the belly of the beast, so to speak. Well, you wouldn't expect it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip through my my holy text to the uh, the picture of Aomade and the dragon and out of that page because this was my place marker is the picture of Bornis um, and Kythar yes Bornis and Kythar I don't know if anybody notices it but that's what happens um huh. and then I'm going to I'm going to say does, does so is this my on, real quick real quick Reed opens his book to an ancient painting of a long lost battle with gods and dragons on one side, and a sketch of a fawn and a large man spooning on the other, and like <laughs> holds it out to the party. I would be Does like, it, it didn't fall out. I'm assuming it's like in the cre uh, crease of the book. So you. Like oh yeah, yeah, okay, up. yeah. You're good. You're good. Yeah. So you're gonna hold it up, and my first thing I'm gonna say is, so the fawn and Kaithar were fucking. What? what that? Uh, no, that. That's what Iomade says. <laughs> no, you're getting it all wrong. Getting it all wrong. No, this, those, I thought I had okay. a wet dream last I'm night. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take. <laughs> this, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the picture that I drew to Kythar. Like you two, were, you two fell asleep on each other. It wasn't, it wasn't that bad. I just didn't know how to draw them. I'm gonna be like, hey, fool. If you need some like alone time, you can. You know, take my tent or whatever, just like I, clean up. Are Reed's cheeks red? Uh, <laughs> look, the shield. Look, look at look at Iomade's shield in this picture. Does it look anything like this shield to you guys? Hey fool, that's like a crudely drawn book. I can't fucking tell. It, it talks about what? her fighting in. Uh, what is it here? I'm sorry. Fighting in the fir before the first age, and we know that this armor belongs to some mysterious warrior who fought Alzareth. Or Al Alzareth? Is that how you say his name? Azeroth. Yeah. Azeroth. No, it's not Azeroth. No, no, no. The the great dragon Alzareth. Oh, Alzareth. Okay. Yeah. The, um, the, the 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 main big big bad dragon. Would it look similar to to me? To who? To what? The shield? To me, anybody... I'm looking. I'm looking at the shield he's holding and the one in the book. And he, he asked all of us if it looks familiar, if they look identical. It, it's the it's the equivalent of holding up like a like a, a razor a... flip phone picture of a of a shield from a hundred feet away and being like, see, that looks just like this, right? Like the resolution's not there. Uh, an artist gonna... an artist rendition. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say, yeah, no, I see it. It, it. A lot of I. It's a lot of similarities. I do think that's. That's yeah, you got it. And we we know that the last place that this shield was seen was on somebody going to fight Alzareth. Um also, and I'm gonna point at uh the map that Monzo had and be all that's gonna take us right to the ruin, fool. At this point I have like all kinds of sketches on there and like lines and you know, <laughs> go here, camp this way. <laughs> you look like uh Charlie from Always Sunny and he's talking about Pepe so <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys haven't seen that. Um, right. Does Kythar keep the sketch? It's in your book. He'd have to take it from your book. No, I, I handed it to him because oh, nobody was paying attention to what I was trying to show him in the book. I slip it away to my bag. <laughs> so I, that, that's my bookmark. I like the, the drawing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
Did, did you just take something in his guy power? Mine now. It's it's all right. I have plenty of others. I like to draw sometimes. When maybe maybe when keep hands looking. and feet away from Kaithar. He's a. Uh... <laughs> Thank you, Stover. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, Carol. <laughs> so how do we get into the ruins without getting? Well, number up? one, full. We got giants, we got dragons, and it's not just like a dragon, right? It's like this big puto dragon, right? He's uh, scaly. He's got, you know, blue uh, blue shit in his throat, you know, and it's not your mama. So, like, uh, we got some options here. Now, if I uh, know our party, right, or know our group here, uh, sneaking in is not going to be the best way. So I think that uh, we got to figure out uh, who's going to be in front, right? How about the guy with the shield from the book, huh? Oh. Oh. Okay. Sure. Listen, though, I need you, and I'm going to kind of put my hand on your shoulder. I'm like, I need you to know, like, there's a high likelihood that you're going to die, fool. And I get, like, serious. You know, I'm all, this is a, if we're dealing with what we think we're dealing with here, right? This is, uh, this is a, this is probably the biggest threat we've like ever faced. <clears throat> I'm prepared to die in the name of Aomade. But you also got to remember that if you die, we probably die. Well, you have the okay. parties. Uh, you have our uh, our group's uh, hopes and futures in your hands, and this is a big responsibility for such a supple young meatbag. So young. <laughs> oh, I love the callback. Thank the, you. The one thing, Tyler, the one thing, Ates says is just so young after talking about a dream. So are you are you proposing an alternate option? I'll do my best to make sure none of you die. Uh, if I have to die to make sure you don't die, then I will do. And that. that sounds good. Well, supposedly, right? This place also has a helmet that uh, we're supposed to be getting, right? That's right. <laughs> I don't know. Anybody got any? I think we should maybe start walking down there and uh, try to figure it out along the way. Also, I think we need a professor in the front trying to look out for these giants. They shouldn't be too hard to miss, right? And uh, David, we're, you said we're about halfway there. So we're like, it took us two or three days to get here. We are about guys, two or three uh, days it away. Guys, three, three plus days to get to the fort. Okay. So we're three, four, five days away from, that we know of, away from the ruins. Yeah, if you can ride the horses the whole way, that'll speed you up. Um, you know, if, if not, then uh, it'll take a little longer. Uh, but yeah, you know, somewhere between three and five days, I think, is a good assessment based on the maps you have. <sighs> okay. Um, I'm back, and it's going to be like three to five days. So I just want to make sure that everyone's aware of, like, you know, what's at stake here. We're uh, three to five days away from, like, you know, any allies. Uh, well, I, uh, I kind of consider you guys allies, so as long as we all stick together, we will never be three days away from allies. We always have allies with each other. You know what I mean? <clears throat> That storybook shit might work there, but, like, <laughs> this ain't a storybook, fool. This Speaking is, of... Uh, are you sure I've been writing things down in my journal this whole time? So kind of a story. You know, maybe that's a story, right? You know. Well, I think it... writing things down. What? Like keeping track of everything we're doing. He journals. Yeah. Oh. Don't you notice that I journal every night? I have not. Some ally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're definitely in a storybook. <laughs> Hey, uh, where's uh, where's Will? By I, I was gonna give him a treat. 
uh, uh, I'm kind of, uh, letting him take a few days off. He, uh, he ripped so many heads off. I think he, uh, deserves it. Unless we need him, of course. Like, you know, he's gonna come if I fucking call him and shit, but, like, we don't have to, you know. Does he, does he vacation? You know, I like to keep him happy. You know, the longer he, every day he comes out, the more sassier he gets. And, uh, just you always know, do Bill, what you tell him to do? Yeah. He, I mean, he has to, right? But, like, you know, he's gonna oh. give me some sass. Sure, sure. It's always I mean, easier. But you're, you're Simone, you know, you. <laughs> You are the sass, you know. What's a little extra? Hey, listen, I know you're trying to like gas me up right now, but you know, trust me, I know my Eidolon, and uh, we're gonna give him a day's rest, or at least try my best to. Trust me, so, there's a. It, so I'd rather have trees? a. What? <laughs> Just remember the last time I tried to climb a tree, I fell down the tree. Yes. Remember that? Fractured a rib. Oh, it's, it's, so painful. <laughs> it's canon. It's canon. <laughs> are, are you still recovering from that fall? Oh yeah, I've been recovering for, from it since day one. I don't think I'll ever, you know, always when this the weather turns, you know, my bones are gonna creak. Yeah, my yeah. Bones. Good, good old lefty. <laughs> all right, so we'll, we'll we're all in agreement. We'll keep heading to uh the the storybook dragons and we'll we'll face them down but we're but like you know are we okay with taking the shield basically basically like right to him do we have any other choice in the journal, does it did it say that he knows that we're coming i mean he's uh, only gonna get it if we die and if we die then you know i don't care if he gets it die or captured fool you think he's going to want to capture us? I'm thinking that something else might want to capture us and then take us to him. Well, not if we kill that something. Okay. Looks like we're killing our way there. I mean, we could... Do you have, do you have a better plan? We're not... None of us are sneaky. I think we should negotiate. <laughs> what do we have that they want? The shield? <laughs> yeah, forget it, guys. Here's a shield. We can Let's negotiate. go back to this town. You think you think us giving away the shield is gonna? They'll spare our lives for that? Listen, no, I, no. Give Reed away. <laughs> All right. Well, has anybody killed a dragon before? Does anybody know anything about dragons? I've killed a dragon. This was more like a hypothetical when I had a big personality we, trait I needed to overcome. Everybody, <laughs> look in your notes. We have we have a lot of information on dragons because we had a whole library research session. Right? Yeah, I know like your shield will block his fire, but... Acid. That's your shield. I think it blocks only the acid. I mean, I, it could probably block fire too, I suppose. I, I know blocked. it. I know it blocks acid. <clears throat> okay. Does it? Well, does it also give me acid resist, David? You won't know until you uh, use it in battle. Okay. All right. Well, then, if we're all in agreement and we're all, uh, you know, prepared, or at least as prepared as we can be, then. Uh, Let's head out. Let's head on. Let's head on out. I'm going to like stick my hand in the circle, you know, like the thing everybody does at the beginning of a sports game. Yeah. Maybe I, maybe Arthur I, puts his fist in the middle. Maybe I, what are you guys doing? I'm going to look at a task. Why? Why? Why are you looking at me? Monza, what are you doing? I'm gonna say, yeah, and lift my hand yeah. up. This, uh... Yeah, but <laughs> Monzo and Arthur look at okay? each other like, we got it. I know what you're talking about. Plus two to Constitution for four hours. <laughs> Inspiration bonus you gave each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> High fives. All right. Uh, Should we? Going... Are we walking, or can you? I mean, my legs are real sore. Oh, we're really Chris hoping... for walking. Well, I got this thing on my thigh. 
Where'd the <laughs> where'd the horses go? Yeah. My calves are a bit tight. Stretch them. Uh, I'm like, uh, I'm like, well, you know, is uh, I guess is the road uh, big enough for us to keep riding? Is it get like wider and stuff mm, as we kind of look this down? This is for sure wide enough for horses. Yeah. Okay, I will summon everyone a horse. Okay, and everybody gets their their ponies. There it is. Bound up, Buttercup. What time of day is it? Uh, you guys started your rest at about 6 a.m. when the sun was coming up. You rested for eight hours. So what's the math on that? It's like four in the afternoon. Is that right? Mm-hmm. So if uh, if this thing's roaming the skies, should we maybe try and travel a little bit by night if we can? Uh, or is it, the, gonna, is it even going to matter? The orc saw us really well at night. Yeah, but like, I don't... Is there any more orcs? I think we're worried about giants. And do those putos sleep at night or do they sleep during the day? If I was a giant, I would sleep at night. Haven't we been... Oh, no, that was a diff- different campaign. Never mind. Yeah. Um, I'd be like, all right, well, then let's try it. He said, uh, according to the journal, there's smaller, uh, there's smaller uh, giants. I don't know how that... That doesn't make any sense. Small giant. Anyway, uh, like we are, are kind of small giants. <laughs> just not as big giants. Oxymoron. Right. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I guess if we encounter one of those at night, then we know like uh, you know, those put to sleep or not. So let's uh, let's get going. And I'm gonna start. I'm gonna rear my horse. You're gonna take off. Uh, I'm gonna. Pick my horse, and you're gonna hear. (laughs) (laughs) Like a bag of nuts and bolts. As you guys continue to trot along this road, uh, for the most part, it's an easy winding path going down. Uh, You guys make your way to about your lunch spot, which looks similar to the area that you camped on. It's just a, a slightly wider patch where the the old road. Uh, you know, once was. But uh, after lunch, you travel for not too long and you come to a stretch where a significant part of the cliff has crumbled away. Uh, and there is still anywhere between a five and a 10 foot like stretch, but it's looking a lot more, uh, it's looking a lot more narrow. I mean, we're talking literally, you know, five or 10 feet and then a sheer drop. So you could still probably get your horses through here, but you'd have to go single file if you were going to be on horseback. <laughs> How big is that? Go ahead. It's just not wide enough for multiple people to be side by side, is what you're saying. Yeah, um, the cell, some though. of the cliff has crumbled away in this in this spot. Anthony, how does the spell work? Can you can you so, desummon? Uh, and... Well, I can desummon any. You know, I can stop for a spell. free. Though. Yeah, at any time for me. And uh, then, I, can well, you swap what's the duration? Because you've been going for you know four to six hours at this point. Twelve hours. Okay, there so you're about halfway hours. through the spell then. Yeah. So um, uh, what do you what do you mean? I, I'm gonna. Monza's gonna speak up and say it's pretty narrow. Maybe we should. Uh, at least get off and lead the horses. Uh, all right, fool. That's fine with me. Okay. <clears throat> Absolutely. About how far is it narrow for David? Yeah. Uh, it's hard to tell because of the winding nature of these as they curve in and around the mountain. Uh, you can see that it goes for at least a hundred feet and then some space on, around the bend, presumably. Okay. I- I do want to keep a action ready. If I see somebody fall, I want to shoot my um, my grapple. I want I want if if there's at any point, um, you know, an option that I can do that. Cool, sounds great. Anybody else want to okay. be ready for anything or uh, give any specific instruction? Nope, I'm just gonna start leading my horse, jump off and start leading. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and in one hand, and then. Maybe not eating in the other order. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be like, hey, hold on, fool. Since it's kind of narrow, like, let's give it some time before the next person goes. 
So about how far apart are you guys traveling from each other? Uh, 15, 20 feet. Party consensus? Yeah, sounds I, good. Yeah. I'd like I'd like a good yeah. 15 feet. Cool. Uh, about uh, the range of a fireball? <laughs> about outside the range of a fireball, I mean? <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, and then I'm sorry, I never asked for it when you guys left. What was your guys' marching order? You guys were talking about putting Reed in front, but I don't know if we ever actually got there. I don't think we resolved that. I think we... I, I'll go in front, that's fine. I think, okay. uh, Reed should be in front. Uh, yeah, I think I have a higher AC. Okay. Mons is somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, so I think, first, who's behind? Do you me? want an exact order, David? We can line up on the board. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. Just line up. It's a best practice whenever you guys are traveling. I want to know who's in the front, who's in the back, who's in the middle. You know, Where are we lining up at? Literally You're the first. So just want. put your guy down. You don't even have to be in a square. Just line yourself up front to back. I see Reed and yeah. Kythar and a Tesk. Reed and Kythar and Simone and a Tesk. Okay, sure. I'll go right there. I'm just trying to be in the middle. Mm -hmm. I'll take the rear. In the rear with the gear. So yeah, we're 15 feet apart, and we're leading our horses for what for the time it's narrow. Right. So you guys are pretty much <laughs> walking, you know, a couple like 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 a foot or two behind the ass of the horse in front of you. Like you guys are, because uh, the horse itself is you know eight feet long. So you know if you guys are only following 15 feet and you're standing in front of the horse. Then you guys are you guys are traveling pretty close, or unless you're talking well, about that 15 case, feet between the ass of the horse in front of you and yourself. There you go. There you go. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, yes. Then we've got a Tesk and Simone and Sigbert in the rear, in rear with the gear. Uh, as you guys make your way across this. Steep Canyon, the sound of rushing wind and beating wings begin to fill the air, uh, and you guys see a winged figure come into range uh, from behind a mountain and begin moving towards you. Uh, and very quickly, you are able to identify, or at least uh, a Tesk and Monzo, who got a great look at it last night, or this morning, I suppose, are able to identify it as the strange flying creature, which had uh, presumably been following you folks for however long at this point. Uh, well, that's as, the it, thing. as it draws closer, you can tell that its body is that of a, of a lion, but its head is not that of a lion. And it has this huge tail quilled with spikes at the end. Its underbelly is white gleaming scales, which blend up its neck into its dragon-esque, draconic, twisted face. Uh, it's deep midnight blue in color, shimmering off of the, uh, uh, as the light bounces off of it. Give me just a minute, you guys. Is it a picture or a mini? It's a map. Uh, I need you guys to put your figures 15 feet apart from each other on this ledge here. Why, you fools? While I... Would we be at the beginning, middle, or end of the map, David? Uh, I, you when guys this event probably, takes place. With how much space you guys put between yourselves... You guys will probably take up most of the space because they're still just five foot squares. So, and I have your order. I have uh, Arthur, or excuse me, I have Reed, Arthur, Kythar, Monzo, Atesk, Simone, Sigbert. Um, and you guys need to put four tiles between yourselves. One of those tiles is occupied by the pony, the other three are the 15 feet you indicated you were following behind. Um, and while you guys are doing that all, uh, this creature is going to come and fly within about 50 feet of the ledge. And, Why is the front? 
can you can you name out the the list again? Uh, uh, yeah, that order? is Reed in front, Arthur in second position, Kaithar in third position, Monzo in the middle, Atesk uh, at fifth position, Simone at sixth, and Sigbert at the end. I'm assuming this way's front. Uh, this way is where okay, we're. Which going. way's front? This way is actually front. I'm sorry, guys. So the okay, so the other way around. Yeah. And where? How far along did we get? Because I, uh, I am. You guys can get as far as you want, out. assuming you leave all the space between you. That you, I, I really think you guys are going to fill this whole map with the amount of space you want to leave between. Yeah, yourselves. I think that's that's literally it. So we'll start him here, five, ten, fifteen, then it's uh, then it's a task right here. Uh, five, so, it's, 10, so back is 15. Sigbert, then it's Simone, uh, then a task. Then right here. Oh. So then I will do uh, it here. Uh, and then Monza's here. in the middle, which he is there. now. Kaithar's in front of him. Arthur's. No, in no, no. I, I think I think you were right, Silver. You were right. Yeah. So you guys have a little wiggle room left and right. Uh, since Monza's the middle, let's kind of center on him. So yeah. let's move these guys up uh, okay. a square and these guys back a square, and I think that'll pretty much get you guys where you need to be. Uh, okay. So this large winged figure flies in uh, and hovers both 50 feet out from the ledge and about 50 feet up from your present location. And as it looks down on all of you, it's not really looking down on all of you. Uh, it moves and specifically addresses a task. Uh, and... looks at a task and says in a, a strange draconic accent on common it's time to come home a task say goodbye to your friends i understand draconic if that helps no it's in common you you guys can all understand oh. it he's just oh, uh, okay. he has a dragon mouth so the words don't come out right gotcha. because he doesn't have like a tongue and lips right yeah um David, can I do a detect evil? Yes, super evil. Um, a test. Oh, okay. How are you responding to this? What? <laughs> Is that a test's response? Yeah, yeah. let's see. And the creature I responds go. with, Surely you didn't think we wouldn't find you. We always find you. I wasn't aware you were looking for me. How did you escape the storm? What, what storm? What are you talking about? Uh, I'm going to remind a task that he's escaped from a uh, college on a rocky set of islands in the eye of an ever-raging storm uh, that is tied into his backstory, and that's literally where he's from. Oh. Uh... Your answers can be the same if you're attempting to play ignorant. I'm just reminding uh, Tyler the player. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just play ignorant. Uh, at this point, I want to open it up to your party. This crazy ass half lion, half dragon thing has just swooped in and started caught talking creepy as fuck to a task. Uh, what's what are the rest of you guys doing? I... Nice, nice to meet you. Uh, Monzo, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Which oh, is okay. way out of character for Reed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put my hand. On my swords. Uh, um, I'm gonna be like, uh, okay, here, here I, I got a good idea. I'm, I'm gonna bluff and be like, uh, that ain't a task. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, I will not bother having you roll because a good DM will not have a player roll when there is no chance of success. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> and the the strange figure that's not a desk <laughs> the, the strange figure says 
Of course it is. Without breaking eye contact with the task. And says, I am tired of waiting. Will you come with me? Or am I taking you? Definitely you can't just not take him. Go with you. Don't you uh, see him on my horse? The creature says, "Very well," uh, and begins to dive bomb a tusk. And you guys are going to need to roll for initiative at the start of next session. Cool. Damn it! Nice. No, 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 no. I'm so I've the the cliffhanger really. Yeah, literally, literally on a cliff. Literally. Yeah, yeah, literally yeah. on a cliff. It's literally a cliffhanger oh this session. Oh my god. <laughs> Have you not learned anything from episode seven? They did the same thing. Could I play like a few seconds of the next episode? <laughs> I know. Can we get a trailer here? It's next Netflix. <laughs> Do we get like a response time for him flying down? Do we get enough time to that's run over now. there or That's now. Oh. That's that's the response. For yeah, that initiative. was that was me asking. Hey, you guys want to do anything? And everybody's like, no. And this thing starts dive bombing, uh, and that's why you roll for initiative to see who has the quickest reflexes. So we're gonna do that to start the next mm -hmm. session to see who does what, when. Nice. Hey, well, this session was really fun. Cool. Yeah. I'm glad, guys. Yeah. I, I wanted to I wanted to try really hard to give you guys some breathing room after like that super combat intense like capture the fort, kill the orc session. Uh, I think it went really well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. Cool. I like that. Yeah. Um, we, I think we got enough time to like, uh, you know, you breathe a little bit. Like you're saying. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Had some planning, you know? Yep. Yep. Cool. cool. Well, I'm going to go wrap up stream. Uh, as always, thank you guys for playing and we will catch you guys next week. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, Good night. Thanks. Nice. Thank you. Good night, Bye. everybody. Bye. Bye. Oh, kali dokali. Let's take a look here. We are at. Bum, bum, ba, dum. Oh, hey, three, three viewers. That means we can raid. Let's go raid Jarl. Uh, Jarl of Goats is a good friend of mine, and he. Oh, you gotta type in raid first. goats uh he is currently playing dungeons and dragons they are probably full disclosure at the end of their session or nearing the end of their session as they tend to uh end uh, shortly after us but i know that when i raid jarl he gets a uh, inspiration for himself as a dm so thank you guys for watching thank you for being here uh token and a test thank you guys very much for the subs uh i appreciate you guys thanks for supporting your friend and being good friends uh let's go raid jarl Tommy makes the same sacrifice to be the kid plays. Oh, oh, oh gee, Murpay with a raid. I need that inspiration. Thank you so much. I want to say that after everyone else was done for the night, because he did that, yeah. like, after. So, immediately, or not immediately, at 5 a.m., the roosters crow, you all wake up. Downstairs. Head downstairs to a frazzled Arthur as they finally finish and Ponzo looking at the doorway proudly. Now this isn't like my normal door, guys. They won't even be able to see us coming. You see a red that door so? in front of you. And you know it. See, Good job. they would be able to detect Arthur's presence. This way we can get in without that presence being I compromised. I can cast non detect on him. You think you're more powerful than Merlin? No, I just didn't know if it would help. It might. It's very okay, impressive. Do it do, I would do it, yeah. Let's okay. double down. I'm not foolish. I know how this stuff works. Measure twice, so, cutting once, yeah. It lasts eight hours. Arthur, it should be eight hours. Are you ready? I'm ready. 
Okay, so right before we go to the door, I'll cast non detect on him. I will mark that off. <coughs> so, for the duration, you hide a target from touch of divination magic. Yeah. 